for a very long time now, I have captured console footage with this Toblerone looking device, the Ava Media Live Gamer Portable 2 Plus. I don't know why it's called that, don't ask me about the name. And because I'm fairly lazy with it, I don't want to have to set it up every single time I want to use it. So even when I'm just playing things off stream, I just use it as a pass through device. And I hadn't touched it in a few weeks, but I assumed that everything was just going to be working. It was not. But the one thing I don't leave plugged in all the time is the USB power. When this thing is powered on, this entire logo on the front here is a blindingly blue LED, and I don't want to deal with that when I'm trying to sleep. And I got that hooked up just because I wanted to play a new game. I wanted to play a weeb game, you know how it is. And when I did that, I didn't have any audio. Now, due to the kind of janky setup I'm working with, that's kind of to be expected. When I want to get audio from the capture card, I actually go and reroute the audio from this device into the output from my system. I do this through a program called QPW Graph. Great program. I think I've done a video on it. And when I open that application, that's when I noticed a bit of a problem. QPW Graph was basically empty. All that was there was a dummy output, none of my devices, not this device, not like my system output, or anything I would expect to be there. Which is strange, but maybe QPW Graph was just, you know, breaking for whatever reason. I try opening Pulse Mixer, and the exact same is true there as well. And the easiest thing to try here is restarting Pipewire. That did nothing. Then I tried to reinstall the packages. And the exact same, nothing happened. Maybe something else weird is going on in my system, maybe something didn't get restarted or anything like that. So I restart my system, and the exact same thing happens. Dummy output, nothing else. And in retrospect, the next step seems pretty obvious, but it took me a while to get there. So the problem started happening as soon as I plugged in this device. So, what if I unplug the device? Nothing happens, but then I restarted Pipewire, and everything was back to the way it should be. I could play videos on YouTube, and I would actually have my audio working. Then I plug this device back in, and the exact same thing occurs. Nothing but a dummy output. Now, capture cards in Linux have always been a little bit hit and miss. I've had some issues with this device, nothing that major. I've had some weird discoloration, colors inverting, the device not showing up in things like OBS, my uh, audio not working one or two times, but every time that would happen, I just replug the device and we're pretty much good to go. This issue was something completely new and I had no idea what to do with it. But I also don't have another capture card to test it with, but I do know the device is a UVC device, a USB video class device, and works through the V4L2 drivers, the video for Linux drivers. So I try out a USB webcam, I've got a C920, and that wasn't causing the issue. So it seemed like it was something to do with this device, which didn't make any sense. I'd been using it for years with no problems whatsoever. But it's my weekend, I want to play this game, and I really don't want to migrate back to Pulse Audio because I know in the long run that is going to cause a lot more issues, especially if I want to do things with Wayland, for example. So what I decide to do, it's kind of shot in the dark, is try out another Pipewire session manager. So when you use Pulse Audio, it automatically routes audio to devices and devices all around the place without you having to really do anything. You can reroute stuff if you want to, but just getting things to your system output generally is going to be done without you thinking about it. However, in Pipewire, out of the box, it works more like Jack. It doesn't do any of the routing for you and needs to be done manually. However, that's not really useful for the general desktop use, so Pipewire relies on something known as a session manager to handle this functionality. 
I was using a session manager known as Wire Plumber. This is a really powerful solution, offers a Lua programming interface to go and customize everything, and generally works pretty well. But I decided to go and try out the reference implementation called Pipewire Media Session. And when I plug this device in, the problem didn't happen. So from everything I can see, Wire Plumber seems to be the obvious issue. Maybe there's an issue with Wire Plumber plus this device, but that just seems way too specific. There's no way that's going to be the cause. We'll start with Wire Plumber and then go from there. That's when I decided to output the Wire Plumber logs from System D, and the problem made itself very, very evident. The instant I plugged the device in, Wire Plumber crashes and core dumps. But this doesn't exactly help me. I can see that it's core dumping, I can see the situation where it's happening, but I don't understand the internals of Wire Plumber to really know why that could be occurring. So I go and open up an issue on the Wire Plumber GitLab just to see what sort of information I can get about this. Maybe it's an issue that already exists, maybe it's something new, and this is going to get dealt with at some point in the future. And it turns out the information I gave was a good start, but it wasn't everything that was needed. This very helpful developer here asked me to go and run core dump CTL to bug wire plant, basically to get a more in-depth look at this core dump to see what might be occurring. I go and post this output, which is very, very long. I do not want to be the person who had to go through and read this, but he eventually did give me an answer when we can eventually scroll to the bottom. And to my delight, it seems to be the exact same bug as this one right here, not in Wire Plumber, in Lib Camera, one of the dependencies of Wire Plumber. Segfault in the control info, I'm guessing that's control info, constructor for an empty vfro 2 menu. If we scroll down a little bit, Lib Camera assumes that every vfro 2 menu has at least one supported menu item. For the cheap no-name K20 USB camera which this user was using, the exposure auto menu does not have a single supported item. That is this menu here, the min answer is 0, it says the max is 3, but in reality it defaults to 0 and doesn't actually have any other options. And maybe that's the same problem that I'm seeing. Going and running vfrl 2 CTL confirms exactly that. In this case, we only have one menu. This one is called Auto Exposure, not Exposure Auto. The min is zero, the max is three, the default is zero, and the value is zero. This seems to be another one of these fake menus that only has zero options. Now, on a random cheap webcam, it makes sense why Auto Exposure wouldn't be a thing. Auto Exposure can be taxing on the device and things like that, but it makes extra sense on a capture card. If I'm trying to capture some random game, let's say, you know, Adelaide Ferris or something, I don't want auto exposure on gameplay footage. That just doesn't really make much sense. It makes sense to expose things like brightness, contrast, saturation, because you might want to go and modify the way the image comes out at the end. But auto exposure in a game context, I don't see any situation where you would want to use that. And here is that same command, but run on my C920. This isn't an expensive webcam, but when it came out, it was a higher tier device. We have two menus here. We have power line frequency and also auto exposure, but neither of these options default to zero. In this case, we have power line frequency set to two, which represents 60 Hertz, and then auto exposure set to three, Aperture Priority Mode. These are real menus where you can actually set different things in them. Which seems to be exactly why it wasn't affecting this device. But if you do have a device that has zero items in a menu, it's going to result in this function with the indices value being zero. If it is executed with indices being zero, it results in an empty span, which in turn results in a seg fault. So if my capture card and random cheap webcams are broken, it's very likely that a lot of other devices are completely broken on this update as well. Now, even though lib cameras existed for quite a while, prior to Wire Plumber existing and prior to Pipewire basically becoming as popular as it is, lib camera was a fairly niche project. 
So cameras are complex devices that need heavy hardware image processing operations. Control of the processing is based on advanced algorithms that run on a programmable processor. This has traditionally been implemented in a dedicated MCU in the camera, but in embedded devices, algorithms have been moved to the main CPU to save cost, blurring the boundary between camera devices and Linux often left the user with no option than a vendor-specific closed-source solution. Previously, lib camera was used for things like those weird IPU6 cameras, which don't really work properly on Linux, but now it's being involved in basically everything. And the issue with this is bugs that nobody knew about or bugs that suddenly appeared in the code base and now being discovered very, very quickly and have to be ironed out so it doesn't affect basically most of the Linux user base. And luckily, by the time that I had this issue, because I, I didn't really use the device, I think for a couple of weeks, by the time that I found it, it had already been merged into libcamera. It wasn't in the 0.02 release, but it was in the 0.03 release. And luckily for me, that release was already in the Arch Linux testing repo. I grabbed it, hoping it would deal with the problem, and luckily, it did. It was the exact same problem. We all G, the capture card works, nothing is now crashing, which is great. But I am on a rolling release. So when a rolling release ships something like this, it's gonna be dealt with in a relatively quick fashion. If you are using a stable point release, whatever you want to call it, and they decide we are going to ship 0.02, please let them know about this issue. Do not let them ship that quietly. At this stage, there is no reason to ship it at a bare minimum 0.03, which is likely going to have its own bugs, but every version is going to have a bug. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Did you experience this problem? Do you use enough USB video devices to even really care about it? Do you use wire plumber, pipe wire, anything like that? Or are you still using Face Ulsa, Pulse Audio, anything else? I would love to know. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Did I already say that? I might have already said that. Uh, if you like this video, remember to go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, suddenly bear a pay, linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T. I've got a gaming channel called Brody, Roll Brody on Games. That's going to be it for me. And I'm going to keep making that mistake for quite a while. I'm out.